Welcome back to West Texas View. Before the break, we were talking about some of the individual stories and some of the, the, the things that happen that we, on a normal day-to-day -day basis, never even think about. And you mentioned a woman who had um, just stepped on a needle. Mm -hmm. Tell that story. Right, the, I think the, another preconceived idea about people that have HIV is that level of promiscuity or potential promiscuity, and that really is not Or all. drug use or something. Or drug use, but, and, it, and it really is, you know, like in her case, she did, it was a very random occurrence and stepped on a needle and contracted HIV, and she's had it for many, many years. We have another one that um, she had a tattoo and contracted it with a dirty needle. Oh. Totally innocent, something that many of us have done. And so I think it's important to know that um, it's so easy. It really could be any of us uh -huh. that end up uh -huh. with that diagnosis. Mm -hmm. it, it's not just for those that are, you know, fall under that preconceived idea of promiscuity or a drug addict or uh, people that have been in prison. I mean, it really could be anybody, especially with and heterosexual women. Except that one of the things I've heard is that we don't really have to worry about our blood supply anymore. Is our blood supply checked carefully? Very. Yes. Very, very carefully, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. we, we know with HIV that uh, uh, it, you can have it in the body, you know, for 10 years mm -hmm. before you get sick, but it always shows up on a test within three weeks up to six months. So the blood bank will test someone's blood today, and they started doing that in the beginning uh, because little children who were hemophiliacs were coming uh -huh. down with contracting mm -hmm. it through getting blood. They had to get blood a lot. So they ch uh, check all the blood for different things, such as HIV now, mm -hmm. and they'll store it, and they'll pull it out three months later and check, and it, check it, it, and then they'll store it. And after six months, if it does not show any HIV, they'll give it to then someone. Then it's ready. But, mm -hmm. but also talk about the progress, or lack of progress, that's been made with women mm -hmm. who have HIV and babies. Oh, have they kept now from babies getting it? Uh, a lot. If the, if the woman, the mother, does all the right things, uh, they have learned, and we have had uh, quite a few have babies that don't have HIV, and so they have learned that if the mother will get on the medicines early on in her pregnancy and stay on them, the medicines do not uh, kill the virus, but it slows them down from replicating, multiplying uh -huh. so rapidly, so they might have a fewer uh, HIV uh, viruses in their body. So uh -huh. if they stay on the medicines, and then if they have the baby's uh, cesarean and not let it go through the birth canal, uh, the babies have a good chance of not having it. Uh -huh. And the reason it's so dangerous for the baby to go through the birth canal is because you have to get this into your bloodstream and the best two ways is having sex and sharing drug needles. Well, when the baby that's bigger than the birth canal goes through the birth canal, that's the best time for there to be some thinning or tearing uh -huh. of the baby's skin and it uh -huh. goes into its bloodstream. Uh -huh. uh, I was teaching this in school one time and a boy said, was really listening and he said, yeah, but wait a minute, he said, the mother's infected blood is there when they do C-section. I said, very good but the baby did not have to squeeze through that tight space. And if mm -hmm. the baby's eyes are closed and everything, they can gently lift that baby out, clean it off, and if nothing went into the bloodstream, that baby's fine. Uh -huh. Good. So that has been uh -huh. a big breakthrough. And, and that's another question I wanna ask. When you go into the schools, particularly fifth graders, sixth graders, seventh graders, do they, do they really listen and absorb, or do you feel like that if they just get one thing, you, you've, you've been I'll tell successful? You, I have had teachers tell me over and over that ours is the only program that the kids listen to. They, won't, they listen to others, but they're not personal enough. Uh -huh. We tell, I tell my brother's story. I tell how my mother and I got cancer in the middle of taking care of him from the stress and, and my mother died, you know, and I'll always believe it was the from stress, the stress yeah. and mm -hmm. everything. And uh, I've had teachers tell me that they want to talk about all of that after they hear us for like weeks. 
uh, and things they've even heard before. So yes, we can tell. So they are taking it seriously. Yeah, they are. <laughs> you, you, we're never going to reach all of them. We're, we're not going to save all of them. But we have many that tell us, you saved my life. I'm, I'm saving myself for that one right person. Mm -hmm. I hold my finger up a lot and I say, you have one life. When it's gone, it's gone. Mm -hmm. You know, so we talk about and life and death. And one bad decision. One bad decision. Exactly, exactly. Home. And many have changed their lifestyles after hearing us. They're not used to people coming in and talking to them about life and death, about dying, mm -hmm. but I do a mm -hmm. lot. And uh, you, are, you are very graphic in how you explain the death of your brother mm -hmm. and very. How, how very mm -hmm. um, heart-wrenching it was to watch him go down very through much. the different things. Very much. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very graphic. That is what reaches the kids. Uh -huh. We know we're reaching them also because uh, we give a post-test and at the bottom is a place for comments and so, uh, and we get letters and they want to tell us their life story mm -hmm. and everything. But uh, one of the things that's interesting, and you haven't talked these statistics, is that older and older people are getting it. So mm -hmm. these people that have been married 70 years and then their mate dies, and mm -hmm. then all of a sudden mm -hmm. they have a new mate and they get AIDS. Mm -hmm. and, and they think, gosh, I thought I was too old and I thought everybody my age mm -hmm. would be clean. Well, and, and it, you wouldn't believe what all goes on in nursing homes. <laughs> I, I know because I used to work in one years and years mm -hmm. ago and uh, I could tell you stories mm -hmm. that would but the bottom you line believe, is there's really they, not any age level. There it could be an no, infant being born or it right, could be a 98 year old. The elderly <laughs> think that they can't get it, uh -huh. but they can. Uh -huh. And so I have talked in nursing homes, but not enough. Uh -huh. We need to do that more. Uh -huh. And w another thing I think that when you go into colleges, that they think they're invincible. Mm -hmm. And so all mm -hmm. of a sudden, you're really having to talk to them even mm -hmm. a different way than you do these elementary mm -hmm. schools. We're going to have to take another break. We'll be back in just a minute <laughs> and continue this conversation. Stay tuned. West Texas View will be right back.